Hey guys, so one of the questions I get a lot is what 2x2 methods and algorithms that I use. So in this video, I'm going to go and show the nine different 2x2 methods that I know and use in my solves. I'm going to kind of go over them briefly, like what they look like slash like when they would come up and um, kind of what the advantages are to them and why I've learned them. Uh, each of these sets are about 40 to 50 algorithms. They vary a little depending on which one. And there's also some other groupings I'll go over, like which ones are like part of the EEG method, which ones are part of like TCLR method, and I'll go over that in the video as well. So let's just go on to the algorithms now. So starting off with the set that pretty much everyone is aware of, we have CLL. This is when you make a solved layer on the bottom, and then you just solve the rest in one algorithm. That's usually the first one that people learn. The algorithms are really nice, which is the main advantage of it. So for EG1, and for these first three sets all combined, make up a set just called EG. This is EG1, this is EG2, I'll go over. And CLL is also sometimes referred to as EG0 because it's part of that group of three. But CLL was made first and that's why it had like a separate name. So the EG1, the advantage is that the face is easier to make. As you can see, basically instead of having an entire layer, you just have one bar and these last two pieces are swapped. And so that gives you more options when you're making your face. And so these faces come across more common naturally. The algorithms are about as good as CLL though, which so some even top two or back twoers um, recommend learning this over CLL, but that's kind of a different debate. But this is one of the ones that you use most commonly, even over CLL, once you start learning more and more methods. So just like CLL, you solve it in one algorithm. For EG2, that's when you basically have a diagonal swap on the bottom, so there's no bars all the way around. And when you do this, the algorithms aren't as good in a lot of cases, but it's still very useful for when you have a short face to EG2. Some people use anti-CLL before they learn EG2, which basically you force a Y perm on top, and then you just finish off with like an R2, F2, R2. But EG2 in general is faster than that, so it, these algorithms are worth learning even though they're not quite as good as the first two sets that you learn, but just like the other ones, you solve in one algorithm. This next set, um, not a lot of people know the entire algorithms for this. A lot of people know maybe just a few that are helpful, but basically it's just like in EG1 face, you have a bar, and then these last two pieces need to be swapped adjacent. And so when you do EG1, you always hold the bar in the back, and then do your algorithm from this position. But for LEG1, you're going to hold the bar on the left. And the advantage to that is a lot of times when you're making an EG1 face, it's not exactly uncomfortable or fast to do it and then have to do a rotation. And that can slow you down a lot. So LEG1 basically makes it so you hold the bar on the left. And that gives you, well, it prevents you from having to do rotations anymore. And again, just one algorithm. And the algorithms for LEG1 are pretty nice, except for a few cases, which um, a lot of people just don't bother to learn. So these next two make up a set called TCLL. It's made up of two sets. T this is called TCLL plus and TCLL minus. These are when basically you have an entire layer made, but as you can see, one of the corners here is twisted. So depending on which way this last corner is twisted, It'll either be a TCL plus if it's facing you, or minus if it's like facing to the right. So these um, also have, the algorithms for these are actually pretty good. So for this one, you would just do something like that. And all these sets here, um, still you just solve in one algorithm. And then this TCL minus. The recognitions, um, these cases are all like mirrors of each other, even though they have different algorithms. So the recognition for them is pretty much the same. These next three sets are, I believe I'm maybe the one of two people that know them or something, because uh, I just finished developing these recently. And for right now, I don't have a good name for these sets. I just together call them like the LS method for last slot. And basically, you make three fourths of a layer, so just like a CLL layer, but this last corner is out. And then if your last corner is facing up like here, then you can solve the rest in just one algorithm. So each of these sets are about the size of like a, the set of CLL or so, um, a little more. They're around like 50 algorithms each, and together they're around like 160 algorithms or so. 
but the recognition is just like the CLL and TCLL, which is with a, little, a few small differences. But these are differentiated kind of like TCLL, where it depends where this corner is facing, so it can face down, it can face towards you, or it can face to the right. And all the algorithms for these are actually pretty good. With some more development, it can improve as well. Um, this one, for example, is just two sledges, kind of. And this one is um, a really nice one, too. It's very short. And then this one is just like a few moves into sledge. So those are all the um, algorithms that I use. The reason that I made those last um, three sets, the LS method, recently is because when you have three-fourths of a layer, a lot of times it's going to be a longer CLL layer and it's harder to check as many options besides basically the only thing that's viable here for me is TCLL and since there's a lot of options to check basically I just made algorithms for all these so I always get the best solution. Some of them are just telling you, some of the algorithms do just tell you basically what's the best TCLL solution but a lot of them are unique algorithms that are really fast and, and in their own right so that's why I created those other algorithms. The ones I use most often are, is EG1 and CLO. Um, the ones I use kind of least, off, least, least often are um, the TCLL methods and then the LS method is the one I use um, the least. But the advantage of TCLL is that the layer is really easy to make because like EG1 you have a lot more freedom with what you're doing. And I hope to also use LS more in the future because that's another one where it's easier to construct because you have more freedom when doing it.